Hello, this is Will Faber from Archer Ride, and today we're looking at the first submission by Jan of our horse, Roxy. Roxy is just two years and three months old. Jan started working this horse about five months ago, just working it a couple of times a week, which would be about all you'd want to do with a horse at this age. And so far, it's looking pretty good. Now, she's lunging in just a halter because she said she was lunging her in a cavasan. The horse started to uh, fold back behind the bridle or break over in the neck a little bit because of the cavasan. So she's just gone to a lunging halter, which is just fine. I, in fact, have a lunging halter that just has a little stiff nose band on it, which I like a lot. I'm not a big fan of the big heavy metal cavasans. So what you're doing here is just fine for right now. There will be a some point at which you want to start getting this horse to carry a bit in its mouth. But that doesn't need to be in, you know, until next year. What you're doing here is just fine for the horse's third year, this would be. But sometime, you know, towards the end of this year, I think you could start putting a bit in the horse's mouth and just letting it carry that. Remember, we, want, we never want to take any contact with a bit until the horse's mouth has completely gotten used to having the bridle in it. And, of course, we only use a uh, double-jointed French loose ring snaffle. And that's what we want to start a horse in and finish them in. There's no reason to ever buy more bits than that. It's all that you need, just right from, from, the, from the beginning, excuse me, all the way to the end. So the horse looks like it's pretty um, controllable here, the way you've got this set up. Certainly not running off and getting too crazy or anything, and that's exactly what we want to see at this level. The biggest damage is that we don't want to see the horse running around like a lunatic on the end of the lunge line or even cantering at this age. So just sticking it to walk and trot would be all that we want to do. Of course, if the horse occasionally canters or something, that's perfectly fine. Just bring it right back to the walk or trot. I'm keeping it to about 10 minutes on the side, which is about what you've done here is about right. Now, what we notice with this horse, he starts off a little bit uh, looking around, that's very normal for them. Remember also with horses, the reason they put their heads up is uh, in the beginning, when, they, when they're out and they're distracted, is they want to see where they're going, because that's how they adjust the light into their eyes. Remember, a horse has no lens like we have. So they adjust their vision by looking up and down. But how quickly this horse gets into a nice stretch right here, and already starts to improve the stride. Notice when we started this horse, it was quite straight behind, if you go back and look at that, but even just already, just releasing that underside of the neck as it's done all there within a couple of moments there, the horse is already stretching down and looking really good. And already we're starting to see a little more bounce in the trot and a little more forward swing of the hind legs. So that's starting to look quite nice right there. But just keep trying to give a little bit more every time the horse starts to curl a little bit, gets there at the bottom and wants to curl up a little bit. So be sure that we re release their now it looks to me like you've got an, uh, a chain on, and I'm not sure how that's a, how you have that fitted. If it's underneath the jaw or not, I can't really tell. Maybe I'll be able to see it better. But if it is underneath the jaw and hooked to the outside, then I would suggest maybe trying to just hook to the inside ring if the horse is... Um, calm enough that it's not dragging you around so you don't have that tension that would be caused by the chain. There we go. So we can see here that the horse has come hollow again, dropped his back, the hind legs are starting to fall out behind a little bit here. So that means we need to get a little more active swing in the horse. But it's very normal at this age, I think, for what you're doing here, this horse is doing very well. I just concerns me a little bit the curling back when it gets there, so I just be careful that you're just hooked to the inside ring of the, of the uh, halter that you have on there. It looks to me a little bit like you've got a chain under the chin, but it's hard for me to tell. And if so, just having the chain on it could cause a little bit of that. But if you just hook to the inside ring, then that's fine. Now, better to be a little slow like this and just get a nice bounce with the head and neck all the way down. Remember, at this level, there is no such thing as being stretched down too far. So if the horse wants to go with its nose in the dirt a little bit, but begins to get the head and neck up and out, that's okay. But begin to ask for a little more swing. It's very normal when we get the horse first to stretch, when they first release the 
muscles on the underside of the neck, they tend to just kind of drop straight down with the neck. And that's normal because the horse has no top line. Now here I'd want to do even less of this cantering around, just bring him right back, which is what you do there, so that's all right. And that's about all the cantering you'd want to do. In other words, you're only doing it when it's an accident, like it was there. Now we start to see a little bit of a swing, but we can still see that little bit of the horse's desire to want to roll back a little bit. So keep trying to release the rein more so there's no tension at all on the rein. And you're doing a pretty good job of doing that. This is just a minor suggestion here. Most of this is looking pretty good. So it's very normal when they just stretch all the way down to want to just get a little bit behind the vertical like that when they haven't when they're not coming through the way this one isn't quite coming through as light as nicely as we would like it to so just keep working for that little slightly bigger trot and letting go of the rain and letting the nose come out ahead of the vertical a little bit more But that is a very normal thing with some horses and kind of a phase that they need to go through because we need to stretch them all the way to the top of the withers in order to get the effect of bringing the withers up through the shoulders and finishing the horse's growth cycle, you might say. I always find that's the last thing that happens when horses finish growing is the withers come th up through the shoulders if we're doing our work correctly to help them develop correctly. Now that's starting to be a pretty good trot there. So that's looking quite nice there. He's starting to have a little more bounce. The nose is starting to be carried out. Still in the dirt a little bit, but I wouldn't worry about that. Just keep trying to release and keep trying to get a little more swing. And as the horse develops top line, it will naturally start to bring the neck and carry it up and out a bit more. That happens from the development of the top line. So it's very normal when they have no top line for us for them to stretch straight down. But once again, if they start to curl a little bit, we know we have to release a little bit and ask for a little bigger stride till we bring that nose back up and out in front of the vertical a little bit. But what, you're, what he's doing there is pretty normal, and you'll find that once you keep doing it uh, the way we're talking about here, keep releasing, keep working for a little bigger stride, you'll find that the horse won't just uh, hang its nose in the dirt, so to speak. That's good there, shows a little more bounce, a little more push through the back. Notice that the hocks look a little more round back there. That is, they're working in a more round manner. Now notice every time the head comes up here, you can see how the hind legs just fall out from behind the horse every time the horse drops its back the way it's doing here. Much better there. Notice as soon as the horse starts to stretch down again, we see so much more, so much of the round movement in the hocks. When a horse is really working over its back, if you put a white dot in the middle of the of the hock, you'd almost see a perfect round circle. That's what we're always looking for. And that should maintain that way all the way up through the gates as the horse develops collection. This is getting to a good place. Now we see the horse is starting to tire just a little bit here. That gets a little bigger, bigger swing right there. So I'm really liking everywhere this is going. He's settling nicely into it. She, that is. And this horse looks now like it's in quite good flesh and, and a good weight for its age. In other words, it's not overweight. We're seeing how the abdominal wall is already starting to pull up. So the amount of exercise you're giving this horse I would say from the looks of it is very good and about appropriate for this horse's level of work and its age. Right there, now that starts to look really nice. There we start to see a little more bounce. Now it gets a little bit too slow right there and once again you can see how when it slows down the hocks tend to fall out behind the horse. But it's just like a person, if you, you should be, every time you're walking, keep trying to engage your core your abdominal wall that is, in all the work that we do, and just walking down the street, as George Pilates used to say. Um, Pilates is just something we do when we walk across the room. But if we know how, if we try to keep ourselves engaged all the time, you notice you will get tired and you will start to have to release a little bit. So no one can keep any muscle engaged entirely all the time. And the same is true of the horse. That's why it's so important for riders to keep themselves in tip-top shape because we have much more empathy for what the horse is going through that we're trying to get into tip-top shape, if you will. 
and realize that not every day is the same. Some days they're a little more tired than others, and we have to keep, uh, take that into account as we work horses and observe them and see when they're trying, uh, when they are beginning to tire out. For instance, when you hear horses that have been moving very nicely and all of a sudden they start to forge a little bit, that tells you that they're, they're beginning to not have as much thrust through the hind legs that is through the back so that they lift the front end off the air. So that's what's happening when the horse is foraging is it's, it's trying to come through behind but it can't quite get the front end out of the way quick enough. And of course it's the thrust of the hind legs that lifts the front end and lets the shoulders swing free and clear of the hind legs trying to come through. So you're having some very good moments with this horse when he's getting into, she rather is getting into a really good place, sometimes just curling back a little bit, and when she does, immediately let go. And I see you doing that, and that's just what you want to do. It won't be long before this horse starts to carry the neck up and out a little bit all by itself. And the nose not so far behind the vertical, as we see it's doing there every time it gets a little too much contact. So just keep trying to release the rein every time you see that, and just send the horse on a little bit, not too much like you did there. And of course, back into the stretch again. So again, look at the hocks there. The horse is staying underneath itself. Notice again also how the underside of the neck is completely relaxed. So if you've only been doing this a couple of days and getting this level of physical condition with this horse, you've been doing really well. So then the next thing to introduce this, with this horse would be to start carrying a bridle, a bit in its mouth rather, not taking any contact, but just let it carry it till it gets used to it. But you don't have to be in a big hurry to do that, just sometime, you know, uh, as the horse gets closer to three years old. Now it's getting nice and rhythmic there. Still wanting to curl back a little bit, but that's certainly coming nicely. Just keep trying to release, just like you do there. Every time he starts to curl up, you just release your hand and send the horse a little bit more forward. As it does look like you've got a chain under the horse's chin there, so just keep trying to remember if you can get rid of that, that would be a, that's probably what's causing some of, of uh, the horses curling back a little bit. But that's getting to a good place now. And so nothing wrong with the horse having its nose all the way on the ground as long as it doesn't curl back. And as I said, it will naturally start to raise. Now that's looking really good right there. And it's just very normal. The horse at this level that has no top line, as I said, as the top line develops, the, horses will just, the horse will naturally carry its neck up and out. You'll see that happen all by itself as the withers begins to develop also. So at this level, all we want to do is activate the right muscles and then let the horse keep growing. Of course, the bigger the horse is, the longer it takes to grow, something for people to always remember. And of course, we're breeding horses so big these days, and yet at the same time, everyone's trying to rush them into these three-year-old futurities and sale classes and things like this. And uh, unfortunately, so many horses are wrecked in the process. That's coming into a good walk there when the horse starts to relax a little more. Same thing here, just wants to curl a little bit behind, but not any big deal. Just keep trying to release that all the time out. Pretty soon that will heal itself. Now, bringing this horse back to the walk, we can see that this horse is not a horse that uh, naturally has a lot of flexion in its hocks. If I were putting on a scale of 1 to 10, so to speak, with the giant movers we see today being the 8s and 9s, you know, this horse is more of about a 5 mover there behind, and which makes it even more important that we do this work. This horse doesn't have a lot of flexion in its hock. It's, I, I would call this horse a little bit straight behind. Not terribly, but by today's standards is all I'm saying. And that's one of the misconceptions that people have when they go and they try to take lessons from these people who have these million dollar moving horses and the way they ride them, they can get this phony frame out of them. But if you try to do that kind of thing with a horse that doesn't have that kind of million dollar movement, 
Not that you get anything when you do it that way, but you really don't get anything when you ride the average horse, so to speak. But we're breeding horses today to have all of this amazing hawk action and just, you know, like they're built on springs. But the problem is, then they are. But if we don't uh, still go ahead and correct the back of the horse so that the springs can work through the back, then everything else just falls apart. And then when we see the canter here, it's, you know, it's a little bit uh, head high than I would like to see, but, you know, the horse canters pretty regularly. I wouldn't want to do too much more than you're doing here before I bring it back again. I'm starting to brace a little bit against the front legs, as you see there in that downwards transition. The horse doesn't come through behind. It just kind of, all of a sudden, kind of stops moving the legs, like sort of like posting. It, it sort of braces against the ground for a minute to make the transition back into trot. So that simply tells us that, you know, we don't have enough um, strength in the horse to make those transitions from the canter and do it well. So once again, at this age, we wouldn't want to do very much canter. But I love how this horse is developing. I mean, just looking at its body, it really is in a good weight for, for its age. It's clearly developing nicely over the back when you're getting in a stretch here. Now we see in this direction, it doesn't, it doesn't want to roll back quite so much. They're always a little easier in one direction than the other. But once again, it's perfectly normal to let that head be all the way down where it wants to be, and it will start to carry itself up and out all by itself. It's way too young to be concerned uh, about it staying down too long. There kind of isn't such a thing as that. Once again, the more the horse stays here and trots, the more it's going to pull the withers up through the shoulders. And by the time you have a four-year-old, you're going to have really an amazingly muscled horse here from doing this from this age, and you'll just get on and ride away. It's very simple when you take the steps correctly. It gets a little spook there. No big deal, very normal for young horses. And you do just the right thing, just... I would have brought it back a little bit sooner yet even, so I just don't do even that much canter, but keep bringing the horse into a smaller circle is what you want to do. We always use the circle to control the horse so we don't have to yank on the reins. But it's very normal what you did in a very, that the horse was spook, and just exactly what you want to do is just ignore it like that isn't any big deal and go right back to work. And once again, you can see how the horse makes those downward transitions rather bracing against its front legs. That's why we don't want to do much of that at this level. But then you get back into a good stretch again. Keep trying to make your circles a little bigger when you can. Oh, I mean, a horse of this size here, we want to get it out to at least 20 meter circles and bigger if we can. But that's getting a good stretch there. And even though the head and neck is down, it's not curling back the way it does on the other side. So that tells me the horse is a little stiffer on the other side, perhaps. But once again, watching the hocks. Notice how we see a nice little bounce and the shoulders are beginning to swing a little more freely here. So when we see the shoulders swing free, we know that the back legs are starting to thrust up through the back and lift the front end of the horse off the ground. That's what they're supposed to do. That's what gets the front end out of the way of the back end trying to come through. Good rhythm again here. And once again, just keep trying to loosen the rein as you're doing there so you're not holding the horse too tightly on a circle. But this is really good. And that's not too low at all. Once again, as the horse develops, you're going to see the neck will start to carry itself up and out. But the fact that the horse wants to stretch that much tells me that it's really gotten the idea of what we want it to do. And, that, and it's starting to feel really good about feeling that stretch and push through the back. And notice how we're nice and relaxed the horse is starting to get here. So this is really, really good work. And once again, you would not want to worry about where that head and neck is right there. It's just fine for where the horse is at this level. So wherever we need to put the head and neck, where the back is able to work in the easiest manner, so to speak. So it can really swing to the back. So that's where the head and neck needs to be, wherever that is. Wherever allows the most freedom of movement and the, optim uh, sorry, the optimization of the stride. That is looking for the best possible stride, which is always the slowest 
stride with the deepest step in the most perfect rhythm. And of course, remember when we're talking about rhythm, we're talking about the two ends of the horse swinging in rhythm together, which this horse is doing pretty nicely here. So watch that diet, watch those diagonal pairs, which is a perfect unison of swing between the two. And that's what we should always see all the way up through the levels. You only have to see um, so many of the horses today that we see with their necks braced up high and against the top of the shoulders and throwing their front legs out straight from the shoulder practically, but the back legs aren't moving and coming through. So actually in the rules of dressage that should be counted down as insufficient when we see horses doing that. But sadly it's become popular today and I think many of the judges today have forgotten what a horse actually looks like if they ever knew uh, when the horse is actually working over its back. A better downwards transition that time too, even though it was uh, rather quick, but the horse didn't just fall on its forehand, so good that time. So in this direction, I liked really what I saw. That got to a really great place. He obviously, She obviously has a little more difficulty on the other side, but that got to a good place as well. So just about what you're doing here is exactly what you'd want to do for the rest of this year. As I said, in a few more months, you could uh, introduce beginning to put uh, a bit in the horse's mouth, just letting it carry it. And um, what a lot of people do, you can put um, little connectors on. Actually, you can snap a bit right onto the uh, uh, side rings there on the side of a halter to uh, put a bit in the horse's mouth, just to let it carry it. So once again, if you, that, if you do have a chain under the chin, I'd try to get rid of that because I think that is what's causing some of it. It looks like it's rather tight, but it's hard for me to tell um, with the size of these pictures whether whether it is or not. But as I said, if it is, you might want to think about getting a, an actual lunging halter that has a little stiffer nose band so you don't have to have the chain there. But really good job. I look forward to seeing the sources. As I said, this is going to be a great one to watch in the, in the, in the future. Keep watching the back end. And we see this horse is a little bit tight in its walk. We want to see keep working that to get it to stretch out and get a more, sw more swinging active walk like there. When it gets to there, all of a sudden it starts to free up. Still a little bit slow getting off the ground behind. That's starting to look a lot better there. But take your time and continue to build that out. You've got lots of time to build this horse, so don't be in any big hurry. This horse is in really good flesh right now. You wouldn't want the horse any fitter than it is right now at, at this age. So what you're doing is about right. And I see how um, clearly the back is not damaged now. You keep up this work like this, and you're going to have an incredible horse here in a couple of years. And how wonderful it will be not to have to go through what we see so many people going through, these older horses that have been hollow for so many years. It takes such a much longer time. With the young ones like this, it should just be a very natural progression as we just add more things to what the horse is doing in time. So great work here today. I really look forward to seeing it. Don't worry at all about that stretch. You want to just leave it all the way down to the ground. The horse wants to uh, keep the nose there for the time being. What you'll see in time, it will start to carry itself up and out as you see a beginning of the thickening of the, of the top line of the horse. You'll see the top of the neck beginning to really flesh out a lot more. And you'll see the withers coming up through the shoulders, and then that will change a great deal. This is Will Faber from Art to Ride. Very good job. Look forward to seeing you next time.